Following on from our last episode about choosing the right chassis and floor setup, there are a few other little ways that we can help get ourselves just a little bit more comfortable. So we're gonna take you through those now in another quick video. So here we are in a Series 3 chassis with lowered floors, which for me is usually fine. But as you can see here, my knees are still very much wedged on the steering wheel, which would make it uncomfortable for me to drive this at any kind of distance. So what we're gonna do is show you how you can A, move the pedals so that your legs are further down in the footwell, and B, move the steering wheel closer to you, which again will help create space between your legs and the steering wheel. The first thing we're gonna do is remove our pedal box cover, which just means undoing these multiple screws with a Phillips screwdriver. Where you have these plastic clips over the top of the brake lines, we unscrew these, but don't undo them too far. Make sure that they stay in the plastic clips. It will help you to put it back on later. When we get to this last one, you'll see we have a bit of a problem. The screwdriver is obviously not gonna fit within this gap. And even if you get a short stumpy screwdriver, there still isn't space. So if you find you're struggling, I would advise a pair of mole grips just to get it started. Get that clamped and then just start turning. You'll find it will probably go quite easily. And before you know it, it will be finger tight and you can just whiz it out. Now that everything's undone, we're just gonna slide off our pedal box cover lid to reveal our pedals. So the observation I would make about this pedal box is that both the clutch and the brake pedal are very high up which is what's causing me to need to bend my knees and then make contact with the steering wheel. One of the problems with having the, those two pedals that close to you is that they pitch from the middle of the lever arm, which means they are pointing at your feet. So rather than pushing them away from you, which is what you would normally do with a pedal box, you are actually having to get our feet over the top of them and press the pedals down to actually have the desired effect. What's more is that the throttle pedal is where I would expect it to be in this car, but with the brake and clutch pedals being such a long way ahead of them, we've got a huge gap to cover here, which is gonna make heel and towing very, very difficult. So we're gonna start by loosening off the locking nut here on the brake pedal. So we just, just crack that off and then you'll find this, this will go loose. Now, the way that we actually adjust the position of these pedals is by rotating the shaft here, which uh, goes straight through to the master cylinder, and that in turn will affect the position of the pedal. So what we want to do is wind this in, because by winding it in, we're changing the pivot point. And you'll see there, the brake pedal itself is just falling down and down and down. It's moving itself further away from the clutch and closer towards the throttle pedal. So you can see that we're limited with the amount of adjustment by the length of the thread here. And as, as obviously it closes in on the top of the pedal, you start to run out of adjustment. But that's, I think, where we want it. So we're just gonna lock this off to make sure that's solid. And I'll come back to explain what this is. For now though, I'm gonna jump back into the car and just make sure that that pedal is where I want it to be. What I'm checking for here is that I can get the brake pedal and that it's proud of the throttle still. So if I'm jumping on a pedal, it's the brake pedal I'm gonna hit first. But I like to heel and toe when I drive, so I'm just making sure I can get hard on the brakes and I'm then just about lined up with the throttle pedal when I'm hard down on the brake pedal. That for me is my setting point. Now that we know where we want the brake pedal, we need to make sure that the brake lights are actually going to work. So they're controlled by this, which is your brake light switch. And the idea is that this little piece of aluminium here slightly depresses this switch when the brakes aren't in use. And when you press the brakes, it will release the lever and that activates your lights. Now, because it's not in contact anymore, your brake lights are gonna be on all the time. So we're gonna to have to adjust that to fit. The way you locate your brake light switch is with the use of these two nuts. So the first thing we're gonna do is slacken off the locking nut. Now in this case, because we need to move further forwards and we're already all the way back here, we don't now need a locking nut on the back. So I'm actually going to totally undo this and remove that 
Now that we've removed this, I'm just going to put the brake light switch all the way through and we can see it's still very tight. It's barely in contact, but that's as far as it goes. So we're going to lock this in place first. The only way that we're going to make this now work is to further extend the bend here. If we just loosen off the brake pedal again, we can gain access to this and we're going to bend it further down and then further back up. If you find that you're struggling to do this with your fingers, it's worth getting yourself a pair of pliers as this will bend. We should then find if we lock this back into place that it is now activating our brake light switch. So before you tighten anything up here, we just need to check the lights themselves. So the next thing we're gonna do is adjust your clutch pedal. So you'll see when you look at the adjusters, here we're actually all the way back, but that's because there are two main settings that you can position your clutch pedal through. And because this one is on its furthest away setting, it's had to be wound all the way in to make sure that it's not just pointing at you. So we're gonna move this onto the further away setting. Now these are held in with a pin, which goes through the middle of the pedal. So we just need to undo that. So we just finished pulling this out and then you'll find this will just push back through. Now try and make sure that you keep track of how many washers you've got either side of this pin, They're just keeping the pedal stable. So we pull this out, try not to drop the washers that are in this side, which is easily done and you'll find the pedal will now just swing into its new position. Now in this scenario, the pin's been put in through from the middle of the pedal box outwards. I'm actually gonna turn that around to make life easier for myself when it comes to putting it back in or changing it later on. So I just need to take the two washers I took off and we've now engaged the pedal onto the closer location. Now it's just a case of carefully putting the split pin through here. Once you've got your split pin back in, we just need to prise those apart and fold them back round to prevent this ever coming undone in the future. Just like that. Now we need to assess where our pedal is. And if you look through here, you can see that now it's gone too far. So we're gonna to have to adjust it back a little. In an ideal world, we're looking to get the clutch pedal to the same height as the brake pedal. So now we're just gonna undo this locking nut here so that we can fine tune it. It's the same as we did with the brake pedal earlier. We're just spinning this to adjust the pedal into the right location before popping the locking nut back in and locking it off. So now you can see we're back in the car. I'm just checking the pedal positions before putting the cover back on and look at this difference. So my feet are just resting on the pedals but not depressing either of them. And all of a sudden I've got all this space under my knees for the steering wheel. So that is now a car that I can drive and we haven't even gotten around to moving the steering wheel yet. So putting these back on, we need to slide these underneath our plastic catches which still have our bolts in them. There we go. And then we're just gonna pop in all the others. Again, keep these loose for the moment. You might need to manipulate the pedal box cover a little bit to get it to line up with your existing bolt holes. Now that we've got almost all of these in, we'll just start to nip them up. We've deliberately left this last one until the end because the screw that we took out of it is incredibly difficult to get out for the nature of it being a, uh, a Phillips head screw. Um, and that's mostly because the access is terrible. So we're going to replace that with an M5 hex head bolt, which will go straight through the same hole. And we can do up largely with our fingers and then when it comes to nipping it up, we can just get a nice eight mil spanner on the end 
with plenty of access. Now what we've got here is a steering wheel which is too close to the dashboard. As you can see, if you've, well, if you've got big hands, you'll find that your knuckles will be catching on the switches and buttons around the dashboard and there's just generally no space behind it for your fingers. So what we're going to do now is pull this away to free up a little bit more space, both for your hands and for your legs. Once underneath our bonnet, you'll find at the top here, you'll have your steering column, which runs straight through the scuttle panel and all the way down the front to the steering rack at the end. Now, almost all of these have a certain amount of adjustment and that's done using this knuckle here. So what we're gonna do is show you how we can create a little bit more space. So the first thing we need to do is to free off the locking nut around our large grub screw here. So you'll generally find that that's an 18 mil socket, unless you have an older car, at which point it's Imperial. Um, so we're just getting on top of that and breaking it off so that it's nice and loose. Next, we're going to loosen off our center grub screw, which in metric is typically five and a half millimeters or whatever your Imperial equivalent is. So we'll just break that off. Those, those are often quite tight, so sometimes you need a little bit of effort for those. Once you've done that, just rotate your steering wheel and you will reveal these 11 mil bolts. So we're gonna loosen these off as these clamp down on the steering column. Now that we've freed all of this off, you should find that the steering wheel has now become loose and will put some play into the whole steering column. However, in some cases where these have been fixed for a long period of time, they might need a little bit extra effort. So if you find this a C solid, I would advise just taking it off altogether. Totally unwind these. What we're then gonna do is just apply some penetrating spray. Now that could be WD-40 or any other brand of your choosing. Now that the penetrating spray has done its job and we've been able to free off the steering column, we will now find that you can slide the wheel backwards and forwards. There is a limitation on how far you can go and that's dictated by the width of the clamp. So I would advise if you've fully removed it, putting it back on loosely so that it sets a position for you of maximum travel. Then check where the steering wheel is in the cockpit. Make sure you've got enough space for your fingers. It's also worth noting the closer it is to you, the steering wheel raises up. So it also creates more space for your knees if you find that you're struggling with that. So now we need to do our clamp back up and we do that by reversing the order in which we took it off. First off, we just need to tighten the clamp together. We do that by tightening the two 11 mil bolts but be careful when you tighten those because the boss itself is made of aluminium and you don't want to strip your threads. Once you've done that, turn the wheel over and do up the grub screw in the center as tight as you can. Once you've done that, it's just the locking nut to clamp off. So there you go, that's it. Making your cage room just a little bit more comfortable for you. It's really easily doable. If you, if you find that your pedal box doesn't look quite the same as this one, or you're struggling to release your steering wheel, then don't hesitate to give us a call here at Turn 7. We're always on hand and happy to help. But for now, we hope that made for a useful video that's gonna get you out and enjoying your cars even more. But if you have any other questions that you'd like us to answer for you, then do drop them in the comments below or email us direct at 7 at turn7.co.uk. But for now, that's the end of another video and we'll see you next time. I've got green, I've got green and red lights though. Red light, red light, red light, red light. Stop. <laughs>